Hi, this is Paul Carlson, CPA with AE Velocity. In this video, we are entering expenses into Delta Cajera. So from the home screen, we go into the menu and we click time and expense. If you don't see the word expense from your menu, please contact your favorite accountant and explain that you have not been given permission to enter expense reports into Azura and they will make a change so you can see this menu. So it brings up the expense screen. So we go to my expenses and in Azura, all the good stuff is behind the blue plus. So let's customize this a bit. We want to keep track of um, expenses that have been submitted. We want to track when they've been supervisor approved and when they've been accounting approved. So click OK. And from this, we can see as things go through. To create a new expense report, we would click New. And we can select beginning and end dates for the expense report. That really, these are nice controls to make sure you're entering the correct dates. So an example, we do expense reports from April 1 to April 15, and that just keeps ensures that the receipts are within those dates. We can choose to copy an expense report, and all this is going to do is it's just going to copy in the project names. So if you're always billing into the same projects, that might be helpful. Usually it's not. We hit cancel. So we are going, let's see here. And then from this screen, Zero only shows you expenses for roughly the last four weeks. If you want to see more, we can pull the green triangle and we can set the dates to whatever to see more past expenses. So we are going to take a look through this example expense report that I put together. So we have the description, it's just a description of the expenses, this is our start and end date that we posted. And then I have added several lines that let's just kind of walk through some of these. So the date, this is the actual um, accounting date that it's going to post into the financial accounting system. If the period has been closed, so if you have a receipt that's dated March 30th and the um, accounting system has been closed through March 31st, you're going to have to use an April 1 date um, when entering your expenses that you're not going to be able to post into a closed period. So we have the date, project, you know, the full regular pull down for Azura, and we can also um, start typing project names and it'll predict a search, bring it up. We see the regular work breakdown structure for each project, so we can select which phase we're billing into. Expense items, we can select um, the expense item, which is a description of what was purchased. Behind the scenes, each of these expense items maps into different GL account codes. And it's this detail is why accounting gets excited if the wrong expense item is used. That is a lot more than just the description that appears on the invoices. Um, so payees, go ahead and type in the vendor name. So here we purchased so blueprints, has some sort of unit rate, and then the example data, probably just ignore that. That we have a $20 charge for blueprints and just a note of what we purchased. Next example is Wilson Elementary School. This is mileage. And so here we can say we drove 45 miles. The unit rate is predefined within Azure that this rate is way too low for the current year, but sample data is wacky. But it will calculate the total amount that's due back to you. Um, next line. So here we have office supplies that are just overhead items. And so it seems like you type the date and it feels like you should have to enter a project and phase, but you're just supposed to know that if it's an overhead item that you leave these items blank, pick the office supplies expense item, and it will post into an overhead account. So we have our little description that's paper from Staples keep cruising through. So this is more office supplies from Staples, but we use the company credit card to pay for the charges. And so again, if you don't see the company credit card that you've been issued on this screen, call your favorite accountant and say, hey, you forgot to add me and we will make the change so you can see the company credit card. We wanna do the um, notes again. 
So here's an example of a charge to the company Amex card that the user doesn't know what to do with. So we'll often create in a change me expense item and then just put a very detailed note on what's going on with this and send accounting an email saying, hey, I don't know how to handle this. Can you help me out? And either accounting will reply back with instructions or they'll log in and go ahead and post this for you. And so that's how you can get the data into the system so you don't forget about it and there's a process to follow up on it. The key here is don't hit submit until the expense report is perfect. Uh, we do understand that um, changes need to happen sometimes, that within Azure, nothing has ever changed. What happens is if you post this to Office Supplies, hit submit, and then realize, oh, this is billable to a project, you have to come back and unsubmit it, change the entry, and then um, update it to the correct item. What Azure does is it posts the original transaction into the accounting system, and then when you change it, it posts a reversing item into the accounting system, and then it posts the new transaction into the accounting system. And if you're trying to read through the general ledger reports and there's so many ins and outs that it can really destroy the audit trail. So please don't hit submit until you're really sure that this is clean. And then final piece is we have a personal expense that someone charged a personal item to the company credit card. So use expense, personal expense, um, pick the credit card and then select personal expense. That when we look at the total reimbursable amount on this expense report, that this amount is subtracted from the amount due to the employee. Because of the items on this report, that these three were paid by the employee personally and the company needs to give the employee a check to reimburse those costs. And so this is you know, like $80, $100. Once you click the personal item, that it subtracts it from the re reimbursable amount. And so it's just really smart system that it will keep track of that. Typically companies really frown upon personal charges on the company card, so don't do this. But if you have an oopsie, there's at least a way out to handle it. When the expense report is complete and you're sure that everything is set, just go ahead and hit submit. And what that will do is it'll start a process of the report being um, approved and by your supervisor and accounting. And with that, we've walked through how to enter expense reports within Dell Tech Azure. This video is a part of our Dell Tech Azure new user guide. There's a link in the description below that points to the full free course on our website. Thanks.